What is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend. Today we have a very special episode slash interview in store for you. We have Evan, the founder of Tolos, back on the channel. He has been on the channel before. I'm gonna link that video up there, so check it out. It's kind of like the origin story of Tolos and kind of what got Evan into this industry. But in this video, what we're gonna be doing is talking about the brand new Archetype 2.0, which I will timestamp down below. So if you're only interested in the shoe and the features that come along with this new model, just jump ahead. But before we dive in, I wanna talk a little bit more on kind of what you've learned over the last year. But Evan, before we do that, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Thank you for having me. And before we jump in, I just wanted to address your audience and say thank you very much. The TF2 audience has been the biggest supporters of Tolos. Um, Jake has been my biggest affiliate. So Jake, thank you so much for the content that you're making. Um, I'm trying, with everything that I am doing with Tolos, I'm trying to be authentic and to try to have um, just a, a natural conversation about everything. So I really appreciate Jake's content. If you didn't know, Jake purchases every single one of the pairs of shoes that he reviews on here. So it just makes a really good relationship for um, a brand. So Jake isn't in my pockets. Uh, we were able to be friends. We're able to work together on the shoes. I get his feedback and it's all honest. And so thank you for being here, listening to him, supporting him. If you can, please use his code so that I can support him. So. Just want to say that to, the, to them before, so. Damn, and I, d I did not tell him to say that, and no, I don't have like a pistol down here to the side, like, say it, motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, and I'm also looking at this video right now. You're way tanner than me. I didn't realize that. Dude, you're a hockey player. I, I've been in the sun quite a bit. But I, I really do, that means the world, and I appreciate that. And like, yeah, like I literally Venmo Evan for the shoes, for example. Like, I really want to make a point to, invest in the shoes and just be a consumer like everyone else. And if a shoe stinks, I'm gonna tell you and I wanna be pissed off about it. But dude. And I'm open to it. That said, speaking of being pissed off about things, I wanna talk about your first year in business. So you're 11 months in to Tolos. I am sure it has probably been a year full of ebbs and flows of highs, lows, lessons learned. Let's talk about, first let's start on a positive, a lot of the things you've learned from your first year running Tolos that have been really awesome and really cool and really insightful that you might have not have known before starting the company. Well, it's been awesome. So overall, running Tolos, the, the entire operation, it's been really amazing. And I was coming from, uh, I was doing a software sales job and it was so lame. And so to do something First that, off, it's not lame if you do that. Yeah, just it, no, 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 no. It, was, lame, it was, was lame for me. I sucked at it. Um, it <laughs> wasn't a good, situation for me and so to be doing something that I really care about that I can put everything into it's amazing so I encourage you if you're wanting to try to do something on your own you want to start a business you want to do that thing you should do it you will be there if you follow your passion you will be so much further ahead because you'll be able to put so much into it so you should do it and that said though with that in mind like starting Tolos I'm sure was a pretty tough feat over the first year, like, what are some of the hard lessons and hard knocks you've had to learn? Well, I mean, it, it was a really hard, the whole process is hard. It's, it's hard to do anything, but starting a shoe company, you have to design the shoe and then build the shoe, and it's really capital intensive. So I moved home back to my family house. I'm 30 years old now living at home, so that's sick. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, that. I mean, that's what I gotta do to be able to do this. Yeah. So I'm so thankful to be able to, to do it. But yeah, so that's, and there's my um again, so sorry about that. So yeah, there, there's a ton of trade-offs where I'm having to sacrifice a lot of things so that I can do this. That's been hard, but honestly, to be able to do this, I'm really thankful. And so thank you for supporting because I wanna make you better and better shoes. And so if you like the first one, I think that you'll really like the second one and I have so much more planned for you, so. And that said, with the first model, because I've enjoyed it, I've given you some feedback based off of like fit and things where I think it could have been improved. But like, what has been some of the main feedback that you've got from the one um, we don't want to talk too much about the two just yet, but like, I'm sure there have been points, at least with like certain customers being pissed off and whatnot, that you've had to learn like, okay, like how do I finesse this and like kind of walk this conversation to also understand and be empathetic, but then also try to like be better about this. Like what have been some of those lessons with like 
some of the folks that have been less than stellar or less than stoked with the Archetype 1.0, basically. Being the being behind the business, I get all of the negative feedback, but it's really important to note that many people, almost everybody, over like 95% of people are loving the shoes and loving the first iteration and understand that it's a first generation shoe and that there's a lot more coming. So people are very understanding and people are saying, you know, this is a first generation shoe and I can already compare it to the highest level of the other companies. And so that's really encouraging. On the other hand, they're obviously being a first generation shoe, there's gonna be fail points of the shoe, whether it's the construction of the shoe, uh, well, it's mostly just the construction of the shoe, really. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that I didn't know. So when I ordered the shoes back in July of last, Last year they take six months to make and ship here and then they show up and then they go out to the market and then all of a sudden all these problems pop up where um, one of the biggest ones was that the sole the rubber was they made it with the wrong compound and got so it. the rubber was really slick it just wasn't grippy a lot of people especially this community is using them as deadlifting shoes and they're just not a really strong shoe a really strong sole and so Immediately, we, were, we went to the factory and we're like, this is not acceptable, we need a better rubber, this is not what we ordered. And so every shipment after February or so was much better. Similarly, they did a bad job with gluing the first ones. So if you got a shoe between December and probably March, April of last year, you likely had issues with some gluing issues and some uh, some rubber issues and so those things were cleaned up in the the shipments after that and the goal with the 2.0 was to take the the construction uh, the things with the construction that needed actual changes to and then work on that and that's what has come with the two gotcha yeah I feel like it's got to be tough man especially with that first model and I think at times I'm sure folks forget that, like there's humans behind these small brands and that's what I always try to keep in mind, especially with like first iterations, like they're only gonna get better assuming that they listen to the feedback of the community. I mean, some companies don't and we typically call them out. But with the 2.0, let's talk about changes because I know a lot of folks have enjoyed their 1.0, especially the folks in my community. For the most part, I think I've had very, very few folks be like, I don't like this shoe or it doesn't fit. It's always been like, hey, this shoe is great. It compares to this, I like it for this. What has been done in the 2.0 to make it a stronger model? So the biggest complaint, not only with powerlifters, with, with athletes like probably yourself, is that the sock booty, because it doesn't have a tongue, it's too hard to get into. And that was a difficult engineering problem because there's a stitch that goes around it. And so the first thing that we did was look at stretchier materials for this mesh. But because of that stitch locking it in, that doesn't completely solve it. So we got an elevated mesh where I think it looks better, it breathes better, it just feels better, it's a little bit stretchier. We opened it up just a touch and, I, and in combination with that, the entry is just much more accessible. And that was really what was happening was most people didn't have an issue with it. Some people had an issue with it, uh, but they still, wore it they were like i have to wrestle it on and that's okay but some people were like i couldn't even get this on my foot and i wanted to make it so that nobody couldn't get it on their foot even yeah. though that's a, it's sort of a hilarious comment but some people couldn't do it and so and those are high volume feet typically thicker feet um and that's something that you've tried to pretty much be a little bit more inclusive regarding like the fit asks of this model exactly because my focus was making it so that it's a very secure shoe so that as you're doing your lateral movements as you're doing basically anything if you want to change up the lacing style so that it's looser that you had options i wanted it to be secure in the booty and i think that there's room for loosening up. secure in the booty baby. <laughs> yeah you gotta be secure in the booty <laughs> i thought that there was room for making it more accessible getting in and maintaining security and i think that we've done a, a pretty good job. I'm curious to see how the market sees it and we'll make changes if, if we need to. And now another change that it looks like you've done on this model is, I know you didn't add additional 
padding around the boot. It just seems like it's a little bit more padded though because I'm sure the mesh stretches a little bit better and it holds that material better. But it seems like you also brought up the sidewalls back here, no? Yeah, exactly. So one thing that I really liked, especially um, with the 1.0 is that it had, I really like the silhouette of the shoe. I think it has a good look from the side. I think that's important for having a good looking shoe is that it looks good from the side. So I didn't want to change that completely, but I felt like the 1.0 was a very short shoe. And so I wanted to raise that up just 10 millimeters. And I think it just gives the shoe a better look. That wasn't a performance change. It was just mostly an aesthetic change. Gotcha, so you can wear it a little bit more casually with jeans and whatnot. And like, granted, it might not be like your best business casual barefoot shoe, but it gives you a little bit more range, I feel like. Exactly, and that's the point is, if I can have a shoe that has more range, then that means people will wear them in more situations yeah. and more positive health impact. True, and then you also get more feedback in different contexts, which is also great. Yeah. Um, another change that I'm noticing is this TPU overlay. And I know you mentioned that that can be problematic. So can you talk a little bit about the 1.0, what typically tripped up a certain population with that TPU and then what you've changed in this model? Yeah, so we shortened this toe cap. So right, uh, so in the 1.0, that toe cap went past the eye stay to about here. And when I designed it, I was under the impression my first time designing a shoe that by putting the or by putting the TPU here and here that the break would happen like this. But what ended up happening for some percentage of people was that this was folding over the TPU, putting hard pressure down gotcha. on that fourth and fifth toe. And so the the point of having this a longer TPU is to have that lateral protection, but because the mesh is is strong and it, it is good construction, you really don't need that and so there's really no reason. And so we, we just shorten that so that it'll be good for every break. Gotcha, yeah, there's, I always have some creasing issues too with uh, certain people barefoot models as well. So that's cool that you're accounting for that and it seems like they're also doing that a little bit better these days as well. Um, with the sidewall, you're likely not gonna run into lateral issues, but do, do you also like kind of increase this material here a little bit? Yeah, so one thing that we were really noticing with the 1.0, especially as this, this material wears, is there's a lot of folding. Mm. So we put in some TPU here so that there's lateral reinforcement on both sides, makes it a little bit stronger and makes it so the material doesn't fold. This is one of the changes where I'm curious to see how it goes because sometimes the folding doesn't look bad. It looks, yeah. it, it could look kind of cool. So. Um, I'm just gonna basically see how it goes and then yeah. maybe change it. That's why we need data points for the community and if you do get these shoes, definitely let us know your feedback in the comments below. Reach out to Evan, let him know. Um, so outside of those changes, it looks like also the stitching internally is different as well. Yeah, so this was, this was another thing where I would get comments from people where um, on the 1.0, there's an exposed stitch around the insole here. And performance-wise, they're the exact same. It, it, I had zero people with a fail point where this ripped out and the shoe had any sort of performance issues, but it just looks yeah. so much more elevated. And it's something that I learned as I'm developing shoes better is that you can hide that stitch and it just looks way better, so. Awesome, so outside of those changes, I'm also noticing a few small things like the eye stay, right? This has also been tweaked? Yeah, so in the 1.0, it's a little bit more narrow and we just wanted to balance it a little bit better. So on the medial side of the eye stay, it, it was widened five millimeters and that gotcha. was just sort of to make it more balanced. Gotcha. Also too, the laces are an inch longer. So that was something people had a little bit of an issue with. Some people thought the laces were too short, which. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I like to wear mine loose and I actually have on the 1.0s now by just pure chance because I actually like the model a lot, but I wear mine loose and I could definitely see like how that would piss some people off. Exactly. I just didn't want it to be too long. I feel like if it's too long, it just looks weird. So. hundred yeah. percent. Um, so outside of those changes, that's like kind of the nuts and bolts of the physical construction. Let's talk aesthetics because the shoe does have some appearance changes as well. Yeah, so the most notable change is that the logo on the side was taken off. And that was just mostly because eventually we wanna be able to have a bunch of different colors of the shoe. We really wanna expand it. And we felt like that logo sort of limited the shoe to being a very athletic shoe. When there's a logo on the side, it makes it very athletic. 
I want this shoe to be very versatile for you. I want you to, in the minimalist fashion, I want you to be able to use this shoe for as many applications as possible. And so we took off the logo and we may bring it back at some point. I know a lot of people really love the gold logo um, and that's okay. We're gonna continue to make better looking shoes. So I hope you like the shoes in the future too. But yeah, we took off the logo and we changed the colors a little bit. So we have the white on white, we have the black on black, which a lot of people ask for. And then we have this new tan sole. We wanted to add a gum. And a lot of times gum ends up being an orange and we wanted it to be more brown gray. So these I are the- I you love this black one. Dude. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I'm really excited. And we're gonna expand to other colors soon. I wanna get colors as soon as possible. We've been testing. But right now, this mesh has a little bit of a gloss to it. It's a little reflective. And so when I was testing grays, they would end up coming back a little bit silvery because of that. And so we're trying to find a mesh that has similar performance and dyes better. So gotcha. That'll Sick. be coming in the three. And so that said, before we wrap this video up, can you tease out just a tiny bit about future models that we might be able to see? Because I know you mentioned briefly to me before we got on this that you were potentially bringing some new models in the future. We don't want to put timelines because yeah. timelines can be very finicky with footwear, but what can we maybe expect next from Tolos? Yeah, so it's really, like you said, timelines are really hard in footwear. I got in trouble with you guys last time where I, I, I knew the changes that I wanted to make. If with, you fuck this up, <laughs> my community will come for you. I know, <laughs> and I want to I want to be good to you guys. <laughs> yeah, so there's, so ultimately with, with Tolos, I want to have a, a lineup of shoes that you can wear in different situations. So these are obviously very athletic shoes. So you're, you're, we're, you're probably not wearing these out to recess and with your jeans and stuff. Recess is a bar here in Denver, by the way, y'all. Yeah. Not like we're, physical school recess. Yeah, like I'm not yeah. going out with kids to go to recess. Yeah, we were talking shoes. about what we're doing this weekend <laughs> and we we're joking about it. So you're probably not gonna wear these out to recess. Although some people might be wearing these out to recess. Yeah. And, um, but I wanna make a shoe that you could. So stuff like that, building out use cases. So it, thinking about all the different types of shoes, there's high top, there's casual, there's leather, there's sandals. So I wanna build out eventually all these lines and I'm working on it right now. We'll, we'll see with timelines. I'm pulling for a high top model. We'll see. But before we wrap this video up, I do wanna bring up one more point and this was something that we meant to mention earlier, the insole now. You also get an insole with this model, which if you bought the Tolos Archetype 1.0, it did not have that removable insole, it just came as is. So with the 2.0, you also get- So yeah, here's the insole. It's three and a half millimeters. And basically the point with this is that some people have a little bit of an issue going to a pure barefoot shoe. And the Archetype is a pure barefoot shoe. It's five and a half millimeters of stack height. So I wanted to provide something so that if somebody wanted just a little bit, it's not a ton, it's just a little piece of foam, three and a half millimeters. Gotcha. It's got some bumps on it for the proprioception. There's other brands doing that. And I'll be doing this in the future too and building this out too, so. Yeah. Sweet, dude. Trying to make it more accessible for people. I'm stoked on this. And then with the release of the Archetype 2.0, loose timeline right now as to when you're trying to go live with this model. Give us a range. Don't give us an exact date just in case things happen. But when exactly do you plan to roll out the 2.0? Yeah, so this video should be out around Black Friday. So it, it will be on sale for Black Friday. Cool. You'll have a code through Jake, that fit friend. The code will work and they'll be shipping first week of December. You'll get them before the holidays. So we're hoping that the end of 2023, you got your archetypes and you're loving them. We can get some feedback and I'll keep building for you. Sweet, and yeah, if you wanna use the code, it helps the channel a lot, but at the same time, use it or don't. Honestly, use whoever's code that you support. If you consume content from Anya, for example, use hers, use mine if you support the channel and whatnot. Use it or don't, either way, it helps a ton. If you're watching this, please use Jake's code. That way I can support him. He's not telling me to do this. Please use his code. No, 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 no. Please use his fucking code. But that's how we work together, is that when people like you try the shoes out, I, I pay him by the, the compensation for that. So please use his code. I'm asking you to.
And also don't be afraid to give Evan feedback because I give him a ton of feedback and honestly I know he I'm appreciates yeah. it and I know that he loves when folks who are usually using the shoes for lifting, training, cross training, etc., and finding pain points or things that they like. He always appreciates that. But all that said, dude, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I'm stoked on this shoe. It's cool to see you continue to innovate, man. It's been cool to see your growth as another small business owner, just seeing like you navigate that and go through the ebbs and flows. But dude, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a ton of fun getting to know you here and, and becoming friends with you through this. And I think we're really building our own lanes of authenticity and so thank you very much and thank you to the TF2 community. Thank you for supporting and helping me build this so that I can build more products for you. So And if you it. have additional questions y'all drop a comment down below or reach out to Tolos aka Evan on Instagram or myself. Uh, but as always drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.